Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study. I'm Leon Pinkett, Assistant Pastor at New Harvest Ministries, and blessed and honored to be our teacher for this evening. I see students are slowly but surely coming into the classroom, and so, um, as I do every week, thank you for your, your continued diligence to our study, and um, pray that you'll be blessed um, as a result of our fellowship together. So let us go ahead and open up with prayer and get right into our lesson for this evening. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for um, yet another opportunity to come before you. Lord, we pray that uh, your spirit would meet us tonight and would guide us uh, into all righteousness, that you would reveal to us the mysteries of your word, that as a result of uh, coming together, that um, we would be the better for it and you would be glorified. We would be more dedicated disciples, more committed Christians, that we would truly be the salt and light that you called for us to be um, in these dark and evil times. Lord, thank you for uh, these faithful students. Um, thank you that uh, for their ears that are attentive to your word. Um, and just thank you for the meal that you prepared for us this evening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Once again, <clears throat> excuse me, once again, just thank you all um, for um, being with us this evening. Um, as we have done for the past a few weeks, the theme has been um, related to Black History Month. And um, being that uh, the month of February um, is the shortest month of, uh, of the year, we, um, I'm going to um, take liberties and add an extra day to Black History Month and continue our studies um, tonight on that same theme. Um, a study that we're going to call tonight, we're going to call uh, tonight's study that we've come this far by faith. We've come this far by faith. A um, very familiar refrain from a hymn um, that, that most of you will recognize immediately. But I, I, I just thought it was important for us to continue the study about the rich legacy um, that um, we have as African Americans, as believers, and uh, what that legacy meant in the past, but also what it means for us now um, as a foundation for even our spiritual growth um, as we seek to follow after the Lord. And so when we think about, excuse me one sec, when we think about coming this far by faith and what it means, um, it's, it's easy to immediately reflect on a passage of scripture out of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. Sorry, right, trying to get myself together here. Hebrews, Hebrews 11, uh, verses 1 and 2, where it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Um, faith is so critical and so important that um, it was by faith that the elders obtained a good report. Um, it was according to their faith. It was because of their belief that they were able to um, gain a great testimony um, that was uh, resulting by their faith. And so when we think about even the song, um, the hymn, We've Come This Far By Faith, um, and I won't try to sing tonight, uh, but uh, the, the, the lyrics of the song say, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. Um, he's never failed us yet. And then it, the refrain goes, oh, 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 can, we can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. Even the, the lyrics of the song um, lay out for us, you know, what is the reason for our faith and what is, why should we have confidence um, not in ourselves, but because we are trusting and we're leaning not on our own understanding, but we are acknowledging the Lord in all our ways, trusting in his word that he's the one that's going to direct our path. And we can do so because um, he is a man of his word and he is a promise keeping God. And 
Um, there has been no situation where he's failed us. And so the writer of the song um, clearly um, has experienced that and um, finds that there's no reason to turn from his situation now. Um, he's come this far um, trusting God. He might as well continue forward. But the, the writer of this particular hymn uh, was a man named Albert Goodson, um, a renowned pianist um, who published this song, Come This Far by Faith, back in 1956. And Goodson was born to Arthur and Clara Goodson in 1933 in Los Angeles, California. Matter of fact, he was um, a, tw uh, um, I don't think he was identical, but maybe um, one of fraternal twins. Um, in an interview, he told a, a particular writer that he, um, he started, or his interest in music started as a child. And um, despite his interest, his parents couldn't afford a piano of any type or keyboard of any type. So what he would do is he would take a wooden board and he would just pretend to play on it like he was playing a keyboard. Um, it's it's, a ma it's a amazing what... Um, passion and creativity can uh, um, will allow for us to accomplish um, you know he, he played a, a piece of wood until um, he was able to get before a keyboard um, he said um, also to this writer that the church that his mother that the church that his um, his mother insisted that he and his brother would go to that, that the choir at the church wasn't particularly good um, but, and he noticed that the choir down the street at the St. Paul Baptist Church was amazing. It was this 200 voice choir with this renowned uh, piano player. And so he would sneak away from church um, every once in a while to go down to uh, the church down the street just to hear the music um, to the degree that his aunt often would come by the house on a Sunday afternoon um, after his parents had sent, you know, he and his brother to church and say his, his his aunt who was a member of St. Paul's Baptist and say hey we we saw Albert at at church today and his mother would look at him like what do you mean you you saw Albert at church I sent them to church um you know our church this morning and she would go no oh, I, I I saw them at our church and so every every couple couple Sundays a month he would sneak down to this other church because he just had a passion uh, for the choir and a passion for the singing. Um, matter of fact, he was quoted as saying that when he was much smaller, at times he would just lay in his bed during the early evenings and he could hear the singing of the choir just down the street. And he would crawl out the window and go closer just so he could hear them better and then sneak back in through the window. And so it was clear that even at an early age, God was uh, calling him and compelling him to ministry and music. Um, he um, went so far as to, um, he enjoyed the singing so much that he, um, they asked him to join the choir. Um, and so um, in order to join the choir, they asked him if he wanted to get baptized. And he was like, whatever it takes. And so he had already been baptized at his other church, but he wanted to be in this church and this choir so bad that he got baptized again just so that he can, uh, I guess, have dual membership so he could be on this choir. And to make a long story short, he... Um, grew as a musician and went on tour. He played for renowned uh, singers, um, both in church and in, um, you know, R&B. Well, I guess it would be R&B. Um, he played for uh, Mahalia Jackson, but he also played for Nat King Cole. And and the um, his biography says that um, there was one day he, he was living in Chicago at the time and he was alone. He wasn't married. Um, didn't have any relatives that were close by or friends in the city. He had become very discouraged. This was a point in his life where he was he was kind of distressed <clears throat> and <clears throat> and found himself discouraged. And one day during one of these, I guess, um, de depressed states, he was sitting down at a piano in a friend's home, and he just began to play a melody um, that was running through his head at the time. As he played, he said that the Lord seemed to be speaking to him through this melody and and out of the the spirit of the Lord came the lyrics that we and so many others have embraced today, where he just began to sing, "We've come this far by faith," and it just um, began to talk about leaning on the Lord and trusting in His word and the fact that God hasn't failed him yet. 
and he said that he immediately knew at that point that he had this melody. And he's, he wrote, you know, many songs, but none ever received the acclaim that Come uh, This Far by Faith um, has received. And so when we look at Albert Goodson's words and what spiritual truth he was able to tap into during this critical point of his life, what message does the words of his hymn still send to us decades later? What, what message are we able to get from uh, the pen of Albert Goodson? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercessions for them. And so when we think about this concept of faith, um, faith brings us to a knowledge of God, a, a uh, saving knowledge of God. It causes for us to trust in his promises um, and, and the eternal promises that God has um, made available to us. Um, and so that leads us to, to understand that the principles of the doctrine of Christ are made up of two aspects. And so when we think about these principles as it relates to um, um, Christ, there are two aspects. One is repentance from dead works, and then the other is faith towards God. And so in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 2, the Bible says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. And since we're talking about faith tonight, I'm, I'm going to kind of put repentance from dead works on the side for just a moment and just focus on this faith and what does faith look like, especially what is faith towards God. You see, in repentance, one turns from sin while in faith we turn towards God. Um, and they are connected and um, can't be separated. They are integral to um, each other. One doesn't work without the other. Um, you, you, the repentance or the turning from sin um, works along with our faith through which we turn towards God. And so that being the case, how important is faith? And, and why is faith so important um, to, the, to a believer, to the life of a Christian? Um, and it's really, a, I guess, a, what some might say, a rhetorical question when we ask how important is our faith, because the Bible makes it clear to us how important faith is in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, where the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. And just in case you were wondering, um, impossible means impossible all the time. <laughs> if it is possible, then it is um, not impossible. But so it is impossible to please God outside of faith. A uh, matter of fact that we can't even, um, we, we can't even have faith unless we believe that God is. And an acknowledgement that God is, is the beginning of our faith and that God rewards those who diligently seek him. There should be no expectation that we would receive anything from God unless we first believe that he is. I mean, how, how could we um, even believe in the goodness of God? How can we even believe um, that he could bless us and um, um, provide for us and reward us if we don't even believe that he is? And so as we talk again uh, further about this notion of faith and why it's important and um, why, you know, what is the significance of faith, let's, let's start with the, the adverse. Let's look at um, the opposite of, uh, I guess, with opposition by first determining what faith is not. And so before we get into what faith is, let's, let's be clear about what faith is not. And so first, and I think I have four, four, four things that faith is not. And I, and I try my best to create some slides. Um, I don't know if I have enough slides for the entire lesson, but most of them, because um, I, I want you to capture these concepts. So uh, the first thing that faith is not is faith is not mental assent. And I think we talked a little bit about this in a previous lesson, that faith is not mental assent. And what do I mean by faith is not mental assent? Godly faith is not simply recognizing that, that Christ was this historical figure. Um, head faith and heart faith are not the same thing. So let me say that again um, so that we're clear. 
having the, a head knowledge is not the same thing as having a heart knowledge. Um, while both of them are important, um, you, you can't simply believe in God or believe in the Christ um, purely from a, a head knowledge perspective. Um, it's got to be believed in our heart. Um, and the truth be told, we're no special, no more special than anybody else um, if we believe in the Bible, if we believe God, if we believe in Christ, because there are people all over the world who can claim that they don't have a heart knowledge or a heart belief in God. And so um, James chapter 2, verses 17 through 20 says it this way. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man that say thou hast faith and I have work, um, works, show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. <laughs> Listen to what James says. He says the devils also believe and tremble. And so you don't get any uh, accolades or brownie points or any pat on the back for just believing God in just with a head knowledge. Uh, verse 20 says, but wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. So godly faith is not merely a mental exercise, but it is a matter of the heart. Secondly, not only is faith not a mental, is not a mental ascent, um, faith is not presumptuous or faith is not presumption. Um, and that means that presumption means that you assume something to be true without proof that it is. Presumptuous faith is dangerous because it imitates heart faith. And I, I said this in a sermon, I guess a few weeks, uh, maybe a month ago or so, but when the children of Israel passed through the Red Sea, they did so based upon their faith in God. Um, and so um, that was um, a genuine spirit-led heart faith. Um, but the Egyptians who followed after them, they tried to imitate the same faith based on nothing. They, they didn't believe in God in, in the sense that the um, children of Israel did. And so they had no relationship. There was no promise, no word. And what happened? They drowned because their faith was not um, established on a, a sincere, heartfelt faith in God. And so they tried to um, emulate a faith that they didn't have. So presumptuous faith imitates the faith actions of others, but doesn't want the cost. It, it doesn't want the sacrifice. It doesn't want the relationship that that faith requires. And so oftentimes, if we're not careful, we'll look at others and look at the faith that they um, exhibit or the faith that they display and um, don't understand the cost, don't understand the sacrifice, don't understand the relationship that has afforded them that faith and be careful trying to imitate that faith and not um, desiring the relationship with the God of that faith. And so the second is that faith is not presumption. Um, the third is that um, Third, oh, I missed one. I'm sorry. The third is a natural faith is not spiritual faith. Natural faith is not spiritual faith. Natural faith is based upon things seen, while spiritual faith is based on things not seen. And so we have to be careful we're not deceived because all men do not have faith. And so 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2 says, And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. And so not only is faith not a mental ascent, faith is not presumption, but natural faith is not spiritual faith um, because, um, as I said, natural faith is built based upon what we see, while spiritual faith is, is ba based on things not seen. And so just because someone has faith in the natural realm does not mean that they have faith in the spiritual realm. It is not the same. Um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says it this way. It's, well, I'm sorry, one through six. And it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Uh, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And then I could go on, and, and we've already read uh, verse six, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder, of them that diligently seek him. And so faith, natural faith is not spiritual faith. And so if our faith does not fit in this classification, it's not spiritual faith. If our faith does not fit in the, par the parameters of Hebrews 11, one through six, then we, we might be operating from a natural faith. We might be operating from a um, head faith and not a spiritual faith or a heart faith. And 
Um, God requires that we have spiritual faith. And then lastly, um, and then lastly, um, faith is not in oneself. Faith is not in oneself. Um, the godly principle is faith towards God. Repentance from sin, faith towards God. And so anytime we place our faith in our own abilities or on our own powers, we put ourselves in the place of God. And godly faith is found in our faith in God through Jesus Christ. And anything else is based on ego. Um, if we are believing in our own abilities, our own intellect, our own resources, networks, you name it, um, then we're not putting our confidence in God. We're believing on what we can do. We're putting our faith in what we're able to accomplish. But God is calling for us to place our faith, our trust, our confidence in him, um, that we would um, lean not on our own understanding, even if that um, um, as, as it relates to our faith, but we would acknowledge him, that we would trust him in, with our faith in all our ways and just believe that he is the one that will accomplish it. He is through us and that he was the one that will direct our path. So um, our faith is not a mental ascent. It's not presumption. Our faith is not a head faith, um, and, um, but a spiritual faith. And our faith is not in ourselves, but in our faith is in um, the God, um, our Savior, um, who is the all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present God. So what is faith? Um, that's the big question for today. You know, how, and how can we come this far by faith if we don't know what it is. So, so what is faith and what does it look like? <clears throat> uh, the first thing, let's, let's give a definition of faith. Faith is defined as simply trust, assurance, confidence in another's um, word. Um, so faith towards God is simply to trust God, to trust his word, um, and to have confidence in him that his word is true and that he will keep it. It is a total reliance on God and his word. So Albert Goodson got it right when he said, you know, um, trusting in his only word, in his holy word. Um, he's not failed us yet. And so um, that's the faith, that's the biblical definition of faith. Um, Hebrews 11, 1, 2, um, we'll, be in, we'll be in these verses all day. I mean, it is impossible to, to talk about and teach about faith and not deal with Hebrews 11. But, but I um, borrowed this definition that um, kind of uh, accentuates certain aspects of what um, faith is. And so let me, let me read Hebrews 11 verses 1 through 2 with uh, these, these editorial remarks. So now faith is the assurance or title, deed, and confirmation of things hoped for or the things that are divinely guaranteed. So faith is the assurance of things that are divinely guaranteed. And they, faith is the evidence of things not seen, and th which means that, that faith is the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. So I might not be able to see it, hear it, taste it, smell it, you name it. But faith tells me that it is as real as if I was able to see it or hear it or touch it or taste it. Um, and it is for by this, this type of faith, this kind of faith, that men of old gain approval. And not just approval, they got a, gained a divine approval because they exhibited this level of faith, this type of faith towards God. Faith is um, the underpinning of a believer's life. Um, it holds us up and it keeps us together. Faith is the proof and the inner conviction of the reality of stuff that is not perceived by the natural eye, but only seen through the connection with the eternal. See, we've got to be connected with um, God's eternity um, to see what he desires for us in our reality. And so uh, our present reality. And so but we've got to have that connection in the spirit and faith allows for us to see those things that God has um, desired and ordained for us. Um, and so faith, that, so what else is faith? Faith is also, um, just as there are five natural senses, when you talk, we talk about sight, hearing, taste, touch, smell, um, faith is none of those. <laughs> um, but faith is a spiritual sense. It touches and it reaches things beyond what the natural senses can perceive. And while faith is not natural, um, it 
mimics or it imitates in so many ways the natural senses. So let's be clear, faith is not a natural sense, but um, there are aspects of faith that um, in the spiritual mimic the, the same expressions um, of our senses in the natural. And so when we think about Psalms 34 verse 8, faith, we have the ability to taste and to see um, through faith. And so the psalmist says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. So faith allows for us to taste and it allows for us to see. Um, when we look at Matthew chapter 5, um, verse 8, um, blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. They, they would go again. Faith, while it is not a natural sense, allows for us to see by faith. Acts 17 verses 27 through 28, the Bible says that they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For him, in him we live and we move and we have our being, as certain also of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. So while faith does not have a natural feel or touch to it, we are able to feel um, after God. We are able to find him by faith. Um, while faith does not have, um, per se, the ability to smell, the psalmist in Psalms 45, verse 8 says, All thy garments smell of myrrh and aloes and cassia, out of the ivory places whereby they have made thee glad. Um, spiritual faith, heartfelt felt faith has an aroma um, as it is um, expressed towards God. And then lastly, um, while faith has no um, ears, Revelation chapter 2, verse 11 says, He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. So um, while faith um, is not a natural sense, and, and uh, surely it is a spiritual sense, um, we do have the ability to see and to hear and to taste and to touch and to smell um, as a result of this spiritual sense. And then um, not only um, are there senses related to faith, faith, godly faith is only found in faith towards God. Godly faith is only found in our faith towards God. Um, when we look in Acts chapter 26, verses 19 through 21, <clears throat> um, the Bible says, Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. But showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coast of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these causes, the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. You see, faith towards self or faith towards man is about who man is and what we can do, um, while faith towards God is about who he is and what he has accomplished through Christ. So let me say that again. Faith towards self or faith towards man, whoever that man may be, is about who man is and what man can do for us. While faith towards God is about who God is and what he has accomplished through Jesus Christ. And so our, our, our spiritual faith is one when we, as I said earlier, when we, um, it is focused on who God is and what he is able to accomplish. A natural faith is one focused on um, who men are and, and what that man can do for us. And so when we look at Romans chapter, and so no matter how we might define faith, it only has one source, and that source is the word of God. And Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So um, by these examples, we um, can declare that faith is found in Christ, who is the living word and the Bible, um, which is the written word. And outside of these two sources, there is no spiritual, there is no godly faith outside of Christ or outside of the word of God. And any faith that does not spring forth from one of these uh, two fountains, which are one and the same, is at best natural faith. Um, or a counterfeit spiritual faith. And so if, you, if we are exhibiting a faith that is not found in Christ or found in the word of God, 
Um, it, it can't be a spiritual faith. It may be trying to mimic or imitate a spiritual faith, but at its heart and at its substance, it is nothing but a natural faith. And so there are five aspects or types of faith. There are five aspects of, of types of faith because we've come this far by faith. The first uh, type or aspect of faith um, is uh, saving faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And so when we think about faith, the first aspect or type of faith is a, is a saving faith, a faith that um, um, causes for us to believe um, in the salvation that's offered through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. The second aspect or type of faith is uh, the fruit of faith. Um, when we think of Galatians 5.22, the Bible says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, goodness, I mean gentleness, goodness, and faith. And so this faith that is a part of the fruit of faith is an act of faith or faith with obedience. And so um, we, we have um, the saving faith, but in the fruit of the Spirit, there is a faith that uh, is active and um, is a part of our being obedient to the Spirit of the Lord. Um, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29 says that by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry, dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. And so there's this faith that comes that is active, that is a part of our obedience um, to God and our adherence to his commands. And so a third aspect of faith, um, we have saving faith, we have fruit of the faith, but we also have uh, the gift or gift of faith, um, one of the nine spiritual gifts. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, Verses 1 through 13, um, we see it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God, calleth Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are differences of ministration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit. And then it goes on with the other gifts. But one, um, the gift of faith is one of the nine spiritual gifts. Um, and this faith is imparted uh, supernaturally, and it is for miracles. Um, it is um, uh, it is a faith to believe. It is a faith to believe in the in the promises, um, in the miraculous work of God. The fourth um, type of faith is doctrinal faith. So we have um, saving faith. We have fruit of the fruit of faith. We have the gift of faith. But we also have doctrinal faith. Um, and doctrinal faith is how the sum total of the revelation of God or is, 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 is reflects the sum total of the revelation of God in the Bible. And it refers to the doctrinal revelation of God. And so when we look at doctrinal faith, um, we look at Jude verse three, where it says, um, beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you. And exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith. That, that's that doctrinal faith, which was once delivered unto the saints. Um, we can go on to see in Ephesians 4, verses 5 through 11, where the Bible says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Once again, talking about that doctrinal faith. Um, Colossians 1, verse 23 uh, says, um, If ye continue in the faith, grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven whereof i paul am made a minister and so um not only do we have our um, saving faith and our gift of a fruit of faith and the gift of faith um, but we also have doctrinal faith that which we believe that which we share that which we um, extend to generations of believers and then lastly 
um, there is um, perfect faith. And perfect faith is the spirit of faith or, or the spirit is when every doubt and measure of unbelief in the life of a believer is driven from their heart, um, which I would imagine few of us have ever achieved, but it is um, a um, unbridled faith and belief in God um, with no um, no doubt um, and uh, uh, no uh, verity in uh, in our faith in him. And so when we look in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 11 through 15, the Bible says, For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Um, James 2 verse 22 says it this way, seeing thou how faith wrought with his works and by works was faith made perfect. And so all of these are designed to lead a believer into a life of faith. When the heart of a man is convicted and repentant and he is presented and he accepts Christ as the remedy of his sin. At that moment, we as believers, we place our confidence and trust in the work of Christ and we receive this saving faith. Um, but as believers, as men, as women um, who have accepted uh, the, the pro eternal promises of God, our faith doesn't stop there. Um, we uh, continue on in this faith and we move from the saving faith into a um, life of faith. For Habakkuk 2 and 4 says, Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So we, we come to Christ through the saving faith, but we continue um, in our Christian walk uh, through this living faith. And so our life and the quality of our life will be directly connected to how we, we live a life of faith. Um, the, 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 uh, um, our experience um, in this life, our, um, how we walk through this life is directly correlated to uh, uh, the how we um, believe in Christ and, and the faith that we um, place in Christ um, is a, a direct barometer of the spiritual quality of the life that we have with him. And John chapter 15, um, verses 1 through 6, <clears throat> um, Sorry, I don't, have, I don't have any more slides for you. John 15, verses 1 through 6, the Bible says, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, um, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the, world, through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches, and he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered, and men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. And we already read in Hebrews eleven six, without faith it is impossible to please him. And so we can only go from faith to faith by staying on this path, this 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 road of faith and maintaining a life of faith through a personal relationship with Christ and his word, um, which is the source of godly or spiritual or true faith. But as soon um, as we disconnect, if we disconnect from God, or are we, we, we become distracted by another voice, um, and we stop moving along this path of faith, we start sinking. Um, we saw that example with Peter um, we can talk, we, uh, I have a few more minutes, we will talk more about that at the end of the lesson, um, that it is a critical that um, as we go on this journey, this faith walk, that we stay connected to um, our Lord, that we, that we not allow any other voices or any other um, things to come to distract us from being led and being compelled 
by this, um, this, this faith connection with God. And so um, I'm not going to go into these in great detail, but I, um, um, I want to at least leave with you the, um, because faith as we walk, it has degrees, it has levels. And, I, and um, maybe we'll come back in a subsequent lesson and dig further into these, but I want to at least leave you with what are the degrees of faith? What are the levels of faith? Because it, every, um, every expression of faith is not the same. Um, there they are different levels of our faith. And so um, one level of faith is no faith. <laughs> and so there, there is a possibility to, um, to, to have faith that um, is non-existent or that, that is not there. And so in Mark chapter 4, verse 40, the Bible says, um, um, this is Jesus speaking to the disciples. And he said unto them, why are you so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And so uh, uh, there is a level of faith that is at the level of not having any faith. Um, there is a degree above that, slightly above that, that's called little faith. So we can have no faith, but you can also have little faith. Matthew chapter 14, verse 31 says, um, And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. And so this is Jesus talking to Peter as he's walking on the water. Wherefore didst thou doubt? And so it is amazing that here this man is walking on water, um, but Jesus would say, O thou of little faith. It, for us, we would probably say, well, he ex expressed great faith to be able to even consider walking on water. But I, I think that um, proves to us um, the, the um, limitless potential that God has available to his children if we would just walk in faith, that he could call um, someone walking on water little faith because he, in the mind of God, he has so much more that we can believe for and that we can accomplish by faith in him, that walking on water is like baby steps. And so there's no faith, there's little faith, um, and then there's a possibility to have weak faith. In Romans 14, 1, the Bible says, Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. And so uh, there's the possibility to have a, a faith, but um, it's not strong. It's not exercise. It's we a weak faith. Um, James chapter 2, verse 17, in, in his writing, James um, gives us another level of faith that's called dead faith. Um and verse 17, he says, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. And so we have an obligation to um, exercise our faith. We have an obligation to work our faith. Um, we have an obligation to not leave our faith fruitless or alone, which is an expression that our faith is not active, meaning it is dead. And so um, um, we, we don't want to have no faith. Um uh, shouldn't um, constantly have little faith, don't want weak faith, and we definitely don't want dead faith, which is an inactive faith. Um, another level of faith, and these all seem to be negative, but there's some, there's some positive um, aspects of levels of faith as well. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 14, Paul lays out for us another type of faith, which is vain faith, um, where he says, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain. And your faith is also vain, meaning if um, if Christ hasn't been risen, then our preaching means nothing. And for you to believe in it is vanity um, and it goes back to that natural faith that's placed in men and not uh, that presumptuous faith that's not um, based on um, a, 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 a trust, a truth in um, God and what he has accomplished. And so um, getting into some more positive aspects of faith, uh, levels of faith, Luke and aspects of faith, uh, levels of faith, Luke in uh, chapter seven, verse nine, he says, he lays out for us what it looks like to have great faith. And so um, the Bible says, when Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. So there is an um, aspect of our faith 
that has the ability to achieve uh, a level of greatness. Um, and then also, uh, good gracious, the la last few, <clears throat> um, not only can we have great faith, we can have fullness of faith. And so in Acts chapter 11, verse 24, the Bible says, for he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people were added unto the Lord. And it, it's um, it's interesting when we look at faith and we look at these levels um, that um, uh, Jesus could call Peter walking on the water little faith, although in our natural mind, we would think that that would be a great um, expression of faith, but then call um, faith that um, wins souls, faith that glorifies God, faith that um, is a testimony to the to the power of God and is um, um, displayed in a way that um, 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 makes an invitation to winning souls to the kingdom, that type of faith is called great in God's kingdom. And that type of faith is called a fullness of faith in God's kingdom. And so, you know, um, as we reflect on faith, we probably need to make certain that our perspective of a faith is right. Um, you see, faith in the natural um, is not necessarily great faith to God um, because that has limited um, um, effects or impacts on our communities. But a faith that um, is expressed in a, in a way to win souls to his kingdom and offer to um, the sin loss um, eternal salvation is that faith that one would call full faith or great faith. Um, in Colossians 2 and 5, the Bible also um, highlights for us steadfast faith, where it says, for, thou, I, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. And so here, um, once again, Paul is talking to believers and um, um, celebrating them for how they have remained steadfast in the faith, despite uh, the, the, the things that are going around them um, and how it is a testimony to God. Um, and just these last four, as we think about um, these levels of faith, in James chapter 2, verse 5, James gives us um, an example of what rich faith looks like. And where he writes, Hearken, my beloved brethren, hath not God chosen the poor of this world rich in faith? and heirs of the kingdom which he hath promised to them that love him, those who are poor in heart, those who are humble, those who are meek. Um, while they might not have the riches of this earth, um, God has um, made them rich in faith. Um, and First Timothy 1 and 5, Timothy shares with us another level of faith, being the unfeigned faith. Um, verse 5 says, Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of a faith unfeigned, a faith unbridled, a faith unlimited, unrestricted. Um, Timothy shares with us that there is a, even a higher level um, of faith with no restraints. Um, Paul in Romans 4, 19 through 20, shares for us um, another level of faith called strong faith. Um, in verse 19, where he says, and being not weak in faith. Remember earlier we talked about a weak faith. Well, this is the opposite of weak faith. Um, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Uh, verse 20, uh, talking of Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And then lastly, um, also out of Romans but this time out of the 12th chapter, verses 3 through 6, the Bible says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Um, that, that is another level. Uh, for as we have many members in one body and all members have not the same office, so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophesy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. So everyone, no matter who you are, where you are, <clears throat> what you've experienced, what you think of yourself, God has given us all a measure of faith that he has an ex uh, expectation 
that we would exercise, that we would grow, that we would use, that we would um, that w- it would be um, uh, available to us. It would kind of guide us on this journey of faith that he has us on. And so um, as we close out, um, the only way that we um, exhibit, I guess, a weak faith or a dead faith um, is or no faith is when we don't exercise our faith. Um, it is critical that um, we use the measure of faith that um, God has apportioned to every man. Um, I heard a friend of mine just last week share that the only way we fail is, is if we don't try. And such is the same with our faith. The only way we fail in our faith is when we don't exercise it or when we refuse to trust God and believe in his promises. And God doesn't want us to fail. He doesn't want us to fall. He, he um, wants us to succeed and have victory through the exercising of our faith. And um, when we think of this exercise, and I told you I was going to come back to Peter and even his walk on water, which um, as he sank, you know, God said, oh, ye of little faith. Um, because if he would have just had a little faith, he would have been able to um, continue um, um, in his journey. But it's interesting when we even think about Peter, um, that um, Jesus walking on water was exib- was um, um, accounted for in three different versions of the gospel. But um, Peter's account is only in one. I believe Matthew is the only one that talked about Peter. And so... Um, Um, It's important for us to realize that just because Peter began to sink, when we think about this faith walk, um, that we shouldn't consider it a failure. Um, We shouldn't consider that it should be blotted out, erased, or not even talked about. Um, Peter walking on the water, um, even um, as he sank, um, was not a failure. Um, um, Peter, the truth be told, Peter did what had never been done. Um, But it only becomes... um, our, our expression of faith, and in this instance, Peter walking on the water, only looks like a failure when we look at it um, as an independent act, and we don't look at it as a part of the journey that God had Peter on. And just like Peter, we should look at our faith walk the same way, that even during those episodes of our life, when um, it appears that we didn't exercise complete faith in God, or where we may not have trusted him, the way that we should have, or where we may have doubted, um, it is all still part of that journey. Um, it is only a failure if we stop walking. It is only a failure if we don't continue to grow in our faith. Um, that our our episodes, our moments of faith, are not just a uh, independent, but they are connected to this great journey. That's a part of a process that God takes us on, um, as He. Um, desires for us to grow from faith to faith. And if we just get stuck on a particular rung on this ladder that God is has us on, um, then we have the potential to, or it inhibits our ability to climb to higher heights the, that God has reserved just for us. So in closing, in Hebrews chapter 12, um, verses 1 through 2, um, the Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such great a cloud of witnesses that that we should lay um, lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us and that we should run with patience um, the race that is set before us that that faith journey that faith race that is set before us God is um, calling for us to run that race with patience um, that we would look to Jesus who's the author and finisher of our, our faith he is the one who initiated our faith walk. And he is the one who will complete it. Um, it. It is only incumbent upon us to stay on the journey and continue to walk. Um, because for him, it was the joy that was set before him. He endured the cross and despising the shame. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, cheering us on, interceding for us, calling us to continue to walk in faith. And so, yes, we have come this far by faith. But because God has proven himself, our faith is calling us ever forward. Um So it's no need to turn back now. Um, We've come this far by faith and we will continue on um, through that same faith. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for uh, the faith that you have um, given unto us. Lord, we thank you that that faith 
is found in uh, you. Um, it is found in uh, the Christ, the only begotten Son of God. And that um, there is no real faith, there's no true faith found in any other source. And so, God, we place our confidence in uh, Jesus. We, we trust um, his eternal promises. And God, we bless you for uh, this faith journey that you have us on. And so, God, it is our desire to, to place our complete confidence and trust in you, God. It is our uh, desire to acknowledge you in all our ways, God. It is our desire that you would direct our very path. And so, God, um, we pray that um, as we exercise our faith, Oh, God, that we will become stronger in that same faith, moving from weak faith and no faith um, to and little faith to having great faith and a full faith and a strong faith. Oh, God, so that we might see uh, the, the promises, uh, the blessings that you have in store for those um, who seek to please you through our faith. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So thank you all again for. Uh, joining us on this lesson. Um, we've come this far by faith, praying that um, you've been blessed, pray that um, your faith has been charged through this lesson, um, and that um, God will continue to be faithful um, uh, to, you, to all of us um, as we um, place our trust in him. And so as I do every week, I encourage you as a part of this faith walk that every day on this same YouTube platform, you can join us at 1 p.m. for our uh, midday mealtime um, daily inspiration with our senior pastor, Bishop Marcus Aaron Johnson, Sr. As um, we, we dine on the word of God, which is the nourishment for our faith. And then um, on uh, two uh, occasions during the week, on uh, uh, Tuesday mornings at 7, 7 a.m., the, the women gather as an expression of their faith for prayer and, and fellowship and study um, on our Zoom platform. And then on Thursday evening, the men do likewise during our time of study and fellowship as um, we, we um, iron sharpens iron as we grow in faith together at 7 p.m. on Thursday evenings. And then um, because we have an obligation to study God's word, which is um, in, um, a, a source for increasing our faith and that we have an obligation to pass that, that doctrinal faith down through generations. On Sunday morning at 9.30, both on Zoom and in person, we have our Sunday morning biblical academy where we study God's word for the uplifting and upbuilding of our faith. And then obviously on Sunday mornings at 11, um, both virtually and in person in, in our um, uh, sanctuary at the corner of East Fayette and Patterson Park here in Baltimore. Um, you can worship with us where we celebrate our faith towards God together um, through the teaching, the preaching, the worship experience um, that we um, come together for on Sunday mornings. And so um, plenty of time and plenty of opportunities to exercise and strengthen our faith. And so pray that God will continue to bless you throughout this week. Um, if the Lord delay his coming, um, that we would gather again on next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Um, because we've come this far by faith. God